Hello everyone, welcome to Art Business with Ness. I'm Ness and today we're doing another art critique. So how it works is I have asked artists in my community to send me their illustrations if they wanted to get reviewed and I'm making videos going over these illustrations, pointing out what works, what doesn't, and what fixes we could do to quickly improve the illustration. If you would like to participate too, then head out to my Facebook group, The Freelance Illustrators Cafe. And you will find the post to submit your illustrations in the announcements. You may have to scroll down a little bit, but it should be the second one or the third one. There it is. It's the one with the silly gif right here. <laughs> and you can comment with your illustration. Don't forget to add your social media and things like that so that I know, uh, you know where to credit you. All right, so let's jump into it. But right before that, if you're new here and you would like to see more videos like this, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell. The bell sends you a notification every time I upload a new video and this way you're sure that you won't miss any of the advice. Alright, let's go! So today we are starting with this gorgeous piece by Wanda Petralia. This is obviously a very pretty illustration. I really like the color scheme. The purple and lilac are really surprising and original and you really succeeded with this color to create a very dreamy fairy tale look. I also really like the Disney-esque style you have going on here, really pretty. So going on to things that we could do to improve the illustration even more, first thing that I see is a little bit of a lack of contrast in the tones. So as I like to do, I just created an adjustment layer here to turn the image in black and white and we can see here that we have some middle grays a lot. We have some wider elements but a lot of middle grays, there's not enough contrast. I created a little gradient here just to show you it's very important to use the whole breadth of tones that are possible from white all the way to very dark blacks but here you do go like maybe up to here but you don't go into this darker area of the gradient so you're missing on a whole lot of tones that could make this illustration deeper have more layers and all of that stuff by adding more contrast to your tones, you could really make uh, the characters and important elements pop out more. Right now, you're relying a lot on color to do that for you. So you have these warm red brown colors and that's why they're popping. Because really, in terms of tone variation, it's not as contrasted as it could be. And it's a good thing to contrast by color, but you can't rely on it entirely because very, very bright colors, they can hurt the eyes a little bit and they don't always print. So I was curious to see here because purple does not print very well. So if you go and put it into CMYK, so this is cyan, magenta, yellow, black, which is what we use when we print, you'll be able to see here that your purples get dulled a lot because that's not a color that actually prints well. So I don't know if you plan to have any projects that print in the future. Maybe if you want to do some publication like children's books or things like this, this is definitely something that you need to take into consideration that some colors are not ideal to use in those sorts of situations. And that's also why you can't always rely on them for your contrast. So I think one of the things that we could do here immediately to make the important elements pop out more is uh, darken our hair. So I'm going to create a layer on multiply and we're just going to quickly go over our hair and make it a bit darker. All right, so this is obviously very, very quick here. And I think we could go much darker still. Uh, of course, you know, it depends on the character. If it's an established character and she needs to have hair a certain color, then you can do that. But doing something like this, can you see how much already it contrasts with her skin? It just pops out so much. So yeah, that is something that we could do here. It gives her like a, a darker auburn color hair. And I think it works quite nicely. Another thing that we could do here is make these birds more contrasted by accentuating the light source. So this is kind of the opposite thing that we're going to do here. We have a little bit of light that's coming from this direction, but it's very subtle. So what we're going to do is just accentuate the light source by adding this really, really white background here. I'm going to adjust later so it's not like pure white.
All right, so this is not perfect, obviously, but this is kind of the feeling that I was going for. And we're going to darken the bird a little bit more. All right, so <laughs> this is an example here. And if you can see, now that this is, you know, really brightened and that they are darkened a little bit, they really pop. Also, your light was pretty subtle beforehand and now it looks like the light sort is a lot more uh, pronounced. Another thing that I wanted to mention here is the story. So to me, it's not a really apparent what is going on here she, she has this one bird that seems comfortable and this one seems very angry with her she seems scared but you know what is she doing with the birds it's kind of unclear so this is something that at the thumbnail stage you would want to really work out so that it's really clear what is happening and that the story is really well explained within your image in terms of anatomy, you did really well in this drawing. The only thing I've noticed that maybe needs a little bit of work is the hands. So your hands aren't quite as successful as the rest of your illustration, which makes them stand out more. Because the anatomy is generally really good, the fact that the hands are a little bit weaker is really quite apparent. This hand especially has a few problems. This is our thumb here in the background. But this is really really small for a thumb, it needs to be a little bit bigger. And her pinky is really quite big compared to the other digits. It needs to be a little bit bigger. It's also quite apparent that she only has 4 fingers instead of 5, so that's something that can look a little bit awkward. But even more than the anatomy itself, it's the position of the hand that looks a little bit strange. Because it's very stiff and unnatural, very straight. It always looks a little bit better, a little bit more natural if the wrist is bent down a little bit. Kind of like this. Also if the fingers are bent a little bit, not quite so straight or not all in the same angle. So maybe something like this. Maybe if the thumb is sticking out this way. Obviously I'm going very fast. This isn't the best looking hand ever. <laughs> But you see what I mean, when you have a little bit more movement uh, in the hand, when it looks a little bit looser, it just looks a bit better. Now this hand here is a lot more successful than the first one, but I do notice that the fingers look a little bit short. So the palm would go to at least until here, I think, and the fingers would go to about here. So this hand just needs to be a little bit longer. The last thing I want to point attention to here is the clothing folds. And I know clothing folds are so, so difficult. Here, it's not always apparent what the lines that you're drawing are representing. Because of course, we don't just draw lines willy-nilly. Each line represents a volume that you're trying to explain. And for example, this line here, I really don't quite understand the volume that it's supposed to be representing. And the fold here, these lines, what it's supposed to represent is that, you know, this is like budging out. But with your lighting, you've put this darker so it would actually suggest that it's going in. And that's just not quite very clear. Make sure that you have a very good understanding of how the limbs are underneath to help you out so here if we have the the arm sort of like this then i don't know that the clothing here would go quite as far like this maybe it would be a bit closer to her, her arm and then maybe there would be just one fold here you have to take into account the thickness of the fabric as well so here from the skirt this looks to be quite a thick fabric but on the top it looks like a lighter fabric so that can be a little bit unclear. Most of the time you want to be pretty minimal with the clothing folds, uh, if, especially if you're not sure what you're doing, less is more. You don't want to add just uh, lines willy-nilly. Uh, you want to make very sure that you understand what the line is doing there. The clothing on this arm looks very puffy as if it's a very thick material, but the fold here is like really small. I would tend to want to do something kind of in between a bigger fold here, but then not quite so big fabric. So it looks a little bit more thin. This is something that you have to play with. In doubt, use reference as much as you need. The fold here, I think is probably not quite necessary if the clothing is a little bit thicker, uh, you can go more minimal with less folds. So I think here, 
for this part of the bust that needs to be a bit more rigid in the dress you might want to put like a little bit of shadow here but maybe you don't need any folds at all so that's pretty much it for what I would say for this image. All in all, a very charming and successful image. You really created a dreamlike atmosphere and you did especially well on her hair and on the facial expression. Really well done. So I think if you focus a little bit more on the story and contrast next time, you should see a great improvement. The second image that we'll review today is this absolutely breathtaking illustration from Sharon NG. And I wanted to pick this image to highlight sort of a problem that I've run quite frequently while doing these art critiques. The level of art skills in my viewers and in my Facebook group is really, really professional. So much so that a lot of the submissions would be really hard for me to review. Like, look at this illustration. It is so gorgeous. I'm looking at this thinking, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> What am I even going to critique here? <laughs> so some of these submissions I may not be able to critique at all, but I'm making a real effort because I think that it can be really beneficial to you to watch a very high level critique, right? It forces us to go deeper than just the very obvious mistakes and go into some really advanced stuff. So on Sharon's illustrations, I found just a couple things that could be improved. I really had to work for it, so let's go. First of all, I wanted to mention the contrast is really good. So I did my trick here that I always do to turn the image grayscale to see what was going on. And this contrast is really readable. So the background very, very dark, which works because it's underwater. And the first thing we notice is the shirt here because it's a brilliant white. And also all the highlights on the hair and it just really pops really, really well. So well done. The only thing for the contrast is that her legs here are getting a little bit lost and usually it's not something that would really matter I think because the expressions that's what's more important and that's where the story is happening but in this case her legs are actually important to story right because they are a different species and that's more made obvious with her legs so I think I would try to make her legs pop just a little bit more by making them a little bit brighter. There's several ways that we could do this. So we could try first to just make her leg a little bit wider. And we actually might only do that for one leg. It's not maybe necessary to do it on both. It would already make quite a difference. It's also possible to make the boots stand out more. You know, they may be a, a different material than just black. They might be a goldish color or whatever. So we could make the boots a little bit lighter and that would really make a difference as well. Maybe not quite as much <laughs> because it's not as important as, as these other elements. But uh, yeah, I think this helps a little bit. Another thing that I've noticed is that her skull looks a little bit squished. So let's go see here more closely. This is especially noticeable because you're working with a style that has more realistic proportions and realistic uh, lighting. So when you work with a sort of style like this, any anatomy things just are much more noticeable than a more uh, cartoony stylized look. So the distance between the ear and eye just needs to be a little bit more, you know, it would maybe some something like this uh, you do it better in this other character but even this one I think this might be a quirk of yours that you tend to not quite give uh, enough space here for the for the cranium um, you know even the back of the head here I'm gonna create a new white layer just so we can see my changes a little bit better right so the cranium, you know, would be a lot more like this. It's actually surprising how, <laughs> how big the head is, you know, besides just the face. Um, with her hair here, uh, you know, it could work because we don't know how much further back it goes. But we can see that you have a tendency to make the skull a little bit more thin than it's supposed to be. And the last thing that I've noticed here is her left arm position. With a very poofy shirt and, you know, the angle here is just not quite clear, her arm position, it can get a little bit lost and it's not wrong per se, but it just makes for an unclear silhouette. And you always want to make 
a clear silhouette whenever possible. Like this guy here, his silhouette is so clear and that just reads really, really well. So I would probably have done her arm, you know, more at her side like this. The position is like up to you, but uh, you know, just so there's a nice space here, you know, why not use it to display her arm like this? and it just can create a much more clear silhouette. And that's pretty much all that I found to critique in this illustration. As you can see, these are some really nitpicky things. This illustration is obviously such a success. No one can deny it. A beautiful illustration. You did a great, great job, Sharon. So that's it for today's art critique. If you too would like to participate in our art critique, then make sure to join our Facebook group and submit an illustration in the announcement post. I will leave a link to the group in the description down below. But for right now, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to help our small channel grow. Thank you so, so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.